One in nine people do not have access to safe and clean drinking water. Water. It covers nearly 71% of the Earth's surface, and it is one of the most essential elements to life. We use water in our homes for everything. Drinking, bathing, cooking. But what happens when life's basic necessity turns into a gradual killer? A corrosive plant closed down in Texarkana, Texas in 1961. Because of the toxins at that site, that land should have remained untouched. However, three years later, homes stood on that land. Children rode their bikes down the streets. Family ate food that grew in their gardens there. Carver Terrace, a neighborhood that was meant to be a sanctuary, caused many to lose their lives prematurely. Who could the citizens count on to solve this problem? Would it be the mayor? Would it be the governor? It will not be someone with an extraordinary title, someone with an extraordinary heart. This is the story of Patsy Oliver, a Texarkana mother, activist, and hero. My mother was my, um, one of the greatest mentors I've ever met. She was the person that, even though I know she was not in the military, I knew when she meant business, um, but had a, very soft loving heart, very giving. Um, she wanted the American dream and to give us a yard with a dog and the fence and you know the house that everybody, everybody's dream is to own a home and at that time we were living in um, government housing which they call projects now but those housings were so nice that uh, it had just left an indelible print on my psyche as a kid because I always had somebody to play with. Mm -hmm. But my mother had, like I said, the dream to one day have the picket fence, the dog, and you know, all of that. And by moving to Carver Terrace, that's what she achieved. Residents began to take notice of the obscure, unexplainable happenings in the neighborhood. The neighborhood was more than toxic. It was a symbolic of the social and racial discord that permeated the city and the country. Dumping toxic chemicals was unacceptable in a white neighborhood, while a black neighborhood was viewed by many as just another landfill. Dean of Science at Texas Connect College, Dr. Katherine Howard, gives us a personal experience about Carver Terrace. That when I would be there and they were doing testing, we'd go into um, Carver Terrace and all the EPA guys and me we would have on hazmat suits. And so, you know, we were walking around the neighborhood in hazmat suits, breathing apparatus and everything. And this is somebody's neighborhood. I mean, there were kids out playing. You know, it's really a really weird feeling. The residents knew something was wrong and the community wasn't going to stand by while conditions gradually worsened, especially Patsy Oliver. And, uh... She told me she had never spoken publicly before, except in church. But one day, the day of the march, we went in the rain over the Texarkana wood and some of the people started speaking that came from other parts of the country. I remember one was from Rhode Island. Uh, and uh, Patsy came over to me and started telling, said, speaking like this. And I said, Patsy, go up and tell the group that. And she did, and I think that was her first public speech outside of a church. But that gave her confidence, and she could become very articulate. Uh, and she became kind of a superstar. It appeared no one would take responsibility for the environmental dangers that citizens of Carver Terrace were facing. However, in 1980, the government passed a Superfund program that was designed to fund the cleanup of hazardous polluted areas. It was obvious that funding from the federal government was needed in order to make an improvement in Carver Terrace. No one understood the works and passions of Patsy Oliver like Dr. Presley did. Because there was no local organization to combat environmental dangers, Dr. Presley and people with similar ambition created FUSE, Friends United for a Safe Environment. Consider what were some of the main issues we should work on here and around Texarkana. 
that was not difficult to find the issues. What was difficult was to decide which priority we would assign to each one. After the test results from the EPA finally came in, Oliver and fellow Carver Terrace residents were furious. The EPA had downplayed the reality of this grave situation. Something had to be done, and Oliver was perfect for leading her neighbors into protest for the recognition they deserved. Patsy Oliver and Jim Presley rallied the citizens of Carver Terrace to organize a march to the Texarkana Town Hall to protest. The citizens felt like the EPA was slow to respond to the crisis, and the EPA minimized the effects of the report that was published. They demanded compensation for the land they bought, unknowing to its poisonous state. Hundreds gathered to protest, led by the outspoken Patsy Oliver, their demands were heard. She coined the term environmental racism and nicknamed her town Toxicana. <laughs> The water is polluted, the soil is polluted, and we as citizens are breathing, eating, and living in chemicals that is toxic and that are hazardous to our health. We are living there in an area where we can't even enjoy a picnic table, a child swing, a play area with a sandbox for our own children. And we are citizens of this country. And I feel like it's a great injustice for anyone to have to endure a lifestyle in this manner. I spent 25 years of my life paying for a home right now that on the market I can't sell. Who wants to buy it someplace I want out of? Well, there's hope. And as long as you have people like myself that want to stand up, and put their life on the line and say, no, we don't want this, we want out. Someone somewhere is going to hear that voice. And I'm willing to make a sacrifice, to do everything that I can. If not in my lifetime, to see that my neighbors, uh, my children, enjoy a better way of life. And she was overcome by seeing for the first time in her life, blacks and whites marching together. <clears throat> it was quite an emotional experience for everybody. And yet, uh, that was only the beginning because when you're fighting something like this, you have to do it on several fronts. The pressure grew heavier for the EPA to recognize what the Carver Terrace residents were going through. Luckily, through all the public outreach, they gained the attention of Congressman Jim Chapman. Chapman took a special interest in Carver Terrace and decided the residents deserved no less than monetary compensation. Through pushing his way into the EPA, Chapman was able to embark the bill for Carver Terrace, forcing the Superfund project to take Patsy Oliver and Few seriously. Through the endless struggle to bring the people of Carver Terrace to civilized justice, the EPA finally decided to buy out the neighborhood. Carver Terrace was one of two Superfund sites that was bought under President Jimmy Carter at the time. December 17, 1993 was the beginning of the demolition in the neighborhood of Carver Terrace. The day the people of Carver Terrace won the battle was also the day they lost their heroic leader. But the very first day that they bulldo down, bulldozed the houses to get that started is the day that my mother passed away, December 16, 1993. So uh, it's uh, something that uh, definitely, when I see the, the, the sites, especially the satellite sites uh, above there, and that being the first house to, that they were demo, demo, uh, demolizing at that time and deteriorating, seeing all of the deterioration that was going around with the area of views, I, I just would look at it and I'm still looking at it because a lot of overgrowth has happened and the EPA protecting agency should be still taking care of that land right now. The happenings at Carver Terrace are now used as a learning experience for Texarkana College teacher Dolores McCright, who takes her students to the entrance gate of the site. I didn't even realize it because a couple of generations had gone by and I've even had some students cry when they found out what their families had gone through and the contamination that had caused problems with their health. 
The only remnants of the neighborhood where families grew and children played are concrete slates and cracked pavement overtaken with weeds. Although residents had to start over in reaching the American dream, they achieved something greater. The incidents at Carver Terrace prove that ordinary citizens are capable of overcoming any obstacle that gets in their way of living the lives they deserve. Without Patsy Oliver's drive to stop the inhumane conditions in Carver Terrace, none of the people who lived through that neighborhood would have been able to survive to tell the story, the truth of the corruption and segregation the government implemented. Similar situations continue to this day, like the incident in Flint, Michigan, where hundreds of innocent people are being hurt by the polluted water because they wanted to live a better life. Patsy's biggest accomplishment was rallying people together. She united blacks and whites to hold hands and march together through the streets of Carver Terrace to spread the message that no matter what color your skin is, we are all still human.